Chapter 3, Inside Out I remember being hit on the wrist with a 12-inch ruler because I did not follow directions in class. Roberto answered in a mildly angry tone when I asked him about his first year of school. But how could I? he continued. The teacher gave them in English. So what did you do? I asked, rubbing my wrists. I always guessed what the teacher wanted me to do. And when she did not use the ruler on me, I knew I had guessed right, he responded. Some of the kids made fun of me when I tried to say something in English and got it wrong, he went on. I had to repeat first grade. I wish I had not asked him, but he was the only one in the family, including Papa and Mama, who had attended school. I walked away. I did not speak or understand English either, and I already felt anxious. Besides, I was excited about going to school for the first time that following Monday. It was late January, and we had just returned a week before from Corcoran, where my family picked cotton. We settled in Tent City, a labor camp owned by Shihei Strawberry Farms, located about 10 miles east of Santa Maria. On our first day of school, Roberto and I got up early. I dressed in a pair of overalls, which I hated because they had suspenders, and a flannel checked shirt, which Mama had bought at the Goodwill store. As I put on my cap, Roberto reminded me that it was bad manners to wear a hat indoors. I thought of leaving it at home so that I would not make the mistake of forgetting to take it off in class, but I decided to wear it. Papa always wore a cap, and I did not feel completely dressed for school without it. On our way out to catch the school bus, Roberto and I said goodbye to Mama. Papa had already left to look for work, either topping carrots or thinning lettuce. Mama stayed home to take care of Trampita and to rest because she was expecting another baby. When a school bus arrived, Roberto and I climbed in and sat together. I took the window seat and on the way watched the endless rows of lettuce and cauliflower whiz by. The furrows that came up to the two-lane road looked like giant lakes running al alongside us. The bus made several stops to pick up kids, and with each stop, the noise inside got louder. Some kids were yelling at the top of their lungs. I did not know what they were saying. I was getting a headache. Roberto had his eyes closed and was frowning. I did not disturb him. I figured he was getting a headache too. By the time we got to Main Street School, the bus was packed. The bus driver parked in front of the red brick building and opened the door. We all poured out. Roberto, who attended the school year before, accompanied me to the main office where we met the principal. Mr. Sims, a tall, red-headed man with bushy eyebrows and hairy hands. He patiently listened to Roberto, who, using the little English he knew, managed to enroll me in the first grade. Mr. Sims walked me to my classroom. I liked it as soon as I saw it because, unlike our tent, it had wooden floors, electric lights, and heat. It felt cozy. He introduced me to my teacher, Miss Scalapino, who smiled, repeating my name, Francisco. It was the only word I understood the whole time she and the principal talked. They repeated it each time they glanced at me. After he left, she showed me to my desk, which was at the end of the row of desks closest to the windows. There were no other kids in the room yet. I sat at my desk and ran my hand over its wooden top. It was full of scratches and dark, almost black ink spots. I opened the top, and inside were a book, a box of crayons, a yellow ruler, a thick pencil, and a pair of scissors. To my left, under the windows, was a dark wooden counter, the length of the room. On top of it, right next to my desk, was a caterpillar in a large jar. It looked just like the ones I had seen in the fields. It was yellowish-green with black bands, and it moved very slowly without making any sound. I was about to put my hand in the jar to touch the caterpillar when the bell rang. All the kids lined up outside a classroom door, and then walked in quietly and took their seats. Some of them looked at me and giggled. Embarrassed and nervous, I looked at the caterpillar in the jar. I did this every time someone looked at me. Miss Scalapino started speaking to the class, and I did not understand a word she was saying. The more she spoke, the more anxious I became. By the end of the day, I was very tired of hearing Miss Scalapino talk because the sounds made no sense to me. I thought that perhaps by paying close attention, I would begin to understand, but I did not. I only got a headache, and that night, when I went to bed, I heard a voice in my head. For days, I got headaches from trying to listen until I learned a way out. When my head began to hurt, I let my mind wander. 
Sometimes, I imagined myself flying out of the classroom and over the field where Papa worked and landing next to him and surprising him. But when I daydreamed, I continued to look at the teacher and pretend I was paying attention because Papa told me it was disrespectful not to pay attention, especially to grown-ups. It was easier when Miss Galipino read to the class from a book with illustrations because I made up my own stories in Spanish based on the pictures. She held a book with both hands above her head and walked around the classroom to make sure everyone got a chance to see the pictures, most of which were of animals. I enjoyed looking at them and making up stories, but I wished I understood what she was reading. In time, I learned some of my classmates' names. The one I heard the most and therefore learned first was Curtis. Curtis was the biggest, strongest, and most popular kid in the class. Everyone wanted to be his friend and to play with him. He was always chosen captain when the kids formed teams. Since I was the smallest kid in the class and did not know English, I was chosen last. I preferred to hang around Arthur, one of the boys who knew a little Spanish. During recess, he and I played on the swings, and I pretended to be a Mexican movie star like Jorge Negrete or Pedro Infante, riding a horse, singing the corridos we often heard on the car radio. I sang them to Arthur as we swung back and forth, going as high as we could. But when I spoke to Arthur in Spanish and Miss Galapina heard me, she said no with body and soul. Her head turned left and right a hundred times in a second, and her index finger moved from side to side as fast as a windshield whipper on a rainy day. English, English, she repeated. Arthur avoided me whenever she was around. Often during recess, I stayed with the caterpillar.